Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Claudia. Claudia, where are you? I'm in the kitchen. Where are you? At the office? I haven't left yet. Well, we finished breakfast ten minutes ago. Five. Seems awful long for five minutes. But awfully short for ten. I didn't even find what I was looking for. Weren't you looking for me? I was looking for my pants. You're wearing them. Oh. Well, do you think I only have one pair? Anything the matter with the pair you're wearing? No, nothing. Except they aren't the pair I'm looking for. You aren't going to change them now. No. Heavens no. I'm, I'm getting ready to paint the bookcases. I thought you were going to the office. Well, not now, darling. I, I mean I'm going to the office now. I'm getting ready to paint the bookcases some other time. But they don't need painting. They're lovely green. Well, don't you remember? We decided last night we want them white in the country. What made you think of that now? We're not moving for months, are we? I'm going to get the paint today and start working on them tonight. Oh, wonderful. I love painting things. When they're all one color. You are not painting the bookcases. What color are we going to paint them? We are not painting them. I'm painting them. I don't know why women think it's so easy to paint houses and furniture and things. It is easy. It is not. Well, it looks easy. Oh, it's easy to leave streaks and make your brush marks look like hen tracks. And it looks like so much fun. I know. It looks like fun while you're doing it, and then it looks terrible afterwards. You don't have to be a man to paint a bookcase. The hardest part is taking the books out and putting them back again. <laughs> well, maybe I'll give you a hand with that. I wouldn't want you to do that. That's the kind of thing only women know how to do. Apparently, you really don't think there's any art at all to painting bookcases. None? Don't you know the brush stroke is everything? Ah, oh, next thing you'll demand a model. <laughs> Where's your smock and beret? And say, aren't you going to get a palette? That's just why I haven't left for the office yet. What's why? I'm not wearing a smock, but I do want those painting pants of mine. Oh. What do you suppose I've been looking for ever since I said goodbye? You've been looking for your painting pants? Mm, bright girl. You uh, haven't seen them, have you? Those spotty old things? Mm -hmm. I don't see what you want with them. That's not spot. It's tradition. The spottiest tradition I ever saw. Why, my whole career as a house painter can be traced on those pants. D don't you think it's about time you had them cleaned? Cleaned? Yeah. Those pants? Yeah. Well, that's the worst idea I've heard of yet. You don't want them clean? Of course not. Remind me to tell you sometime how happy I am to have married you. Me? Yeah. Any other woman would have sent those pants to the cleaners after seeing them in my closet without a second thought. Any other woman? Mm -hmm. Not only wasteful, but such a total lack of understanding. A total lack of understanding just because she... she'd send a pair of pants to the cleaners. There are some things that just shouldn't be cleaned. What? Besides old pants with paint on them, for instance. Old well, pants with paint on them are enough. Meddling women can't leave a man's things alone. I, I'm glad I didn't marry one. Oh, what I've done. Uh, just an old egg cup. Oh, that. I wasn't thinking of the egg cup. Nice one, though. They're awfully hard to get nowadays, egg cups are. So are old pants. Oh. You didn't see mine around anywhere, did you? I, 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 I like eating eggs out of the shell. Don't you? David, did you hear that a man has invented square eggs? <laughs> You're sure you didn't see any painting pants around anyway? You know, I, I don't think I'd like square eggs anyway. Oh, you don't? You'd probably have to get a square spoon to eat them with. I'll bet you the Mona Lisa would never have been painted if someone had sent the artist's smock to the cleaners. There weren't any cleaners then, I bet you 20 cents. Well, please try to find my painting pants today because... I'd like to start on the bookcases this evening. We aren't doing anything else, are we? 
Those dirty old things. I wouldn't touch them if I did find them. If those pants were clean, I'd probably lose my touch completely. Touch? So, mm, so you please look for them, will you? I'll look, Master. And you better look for a couple of egg cups, darling. Or a dozen square eggs. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Goodbye. Goodbye, David. I love you all day long. David, mm-hmm. promise me you'll love me tonight, too. He's gone. Shakespeare, get out of the wreckage, you silly cat. Go cut yourself on an old egg cup and get out of my way. We've just got to get those painting pants back today. We've just got to. Hello? Hello, is this Logan's Cleaning and Dine? Hello, Mr. Logan. This is Mrs. Norton, Mrs. David Norton. Now, Mr. Logan, look, I've got something terribly, terribly urgent, and you'll just have to help me do it, Mr. Logan. Now, look, this is what it is. Well, of course, we're going to do everything we can to help you, Mrs. Norton. Urgent things of our specialty, you know. (laughs) Brown trousers with paint on them. You brought them in last week? Uh, What color did you say they were? Uh, Excuse me, please, Mrs. Norton, my other phone is ringing. Logan's cleaning and dying. Mr. Logan speaking. Uh, good morning. Uh, you, uh, you'll have to excuse me. I've, I've got someone on the other phone. Uh, yes, Mrs. Morton. I, I mean, Norton. Of course your trousers are ready. I'm sure they are. Excuse me a moment, please. Uh, now, what exactly can I do for you, madam? A blue dress with pleats. Uh, wasn't I talking to you just now? Well, well, I'm, I'm sorry, madam, but you'll still have to wait. Uh, yes, I'm sure they're ready, Mrs. Norton. You'd like me to deliver them? Well, uh, no, there's the third phone... Uh, Mrs. Norton, my girl is sick, and the delivery boy didn't show up today, and, and my assistant is on his vacation, and, oh, there's the door. Oh, and my goodness, the back door. Uh, and if you don't mind, Mrs. Norton, you'd better come over and get the trousers yourself. Things were a tiny bit upset, but I think I'll have everything all straightened out by three o'clock. Mr. Logan, I'm Mrs. Norton. Mrs. Norton? Uh, Mrs. David Norton. That's me. I. That's I. <laughs> Here are your trousers, Mrs. Norton. Oh. You don't mind, I'm sure, if I open them for you. I like to look at the superior work turned out by this establishment. What sort of spots did you say were on these trousers? Paint. Big, tremendous gobs of paint. All colors, too. Red paint, yellow paint, and blue paint. Well, Mrs. Norton, as you will see, every drop of paint has been removed by your husband from your husband's trousers without the slightest injury. Oh, fabric. I was afraid of that. Afraid? Afraid? I'm not sure I understand. Just let me have the trousers, Mr. Logan. I couldn't begin to explain. Uh, I want you to see them first. Well, well, Mrs. Norton, here you are. Just as I said, isn't it? Beautiful herringbone trousers and not a suspicion of paint on them. I never saw anything like it in my life. We pride ourselves on our work, Mrs. Norton. You mean under all that paint, these trousers look like that? You know, Mr. Logan, I didn't even know they were herringbone. You didn't? No. (laughs) Well, well, that's very amusing, Mrs. Norton. As a matter of fact, I'm almost sure it wasn't herringbone, but I could see of it. Delightful. You don't mind if I use this little incident in some advertising we're planning... Uh, Your husband will be very busy. I'm very happy, I'm sure. It's just like finding a new pair of trousers in one's closet. Just like? It's more than that. How's that again, Mrs. Norton? Those are new trousers. I beg your pardon? Those are not my husband's trousers. There must be some mistake, Mrs. Norton. Perhaps the shock of seeing them without paint. Mr. Logan's shock hasn't anything to do with it. Mr. Norton's pants were not herringbones. And they were about... about... Twelve inches smaller around here than those. There must be some mistake. Where do you think our pants are? They're probably at the factory being cleaned. Uh, They won't be back until tomorrow. Aren't they in your store? Mrs. Norton, nothing is kept in the store. What's that pile of things over there? Uh, That's nothing, Mrs. Norton, nothing at all. An awfully big pile for nothing. That's clothes that just recently came in and we haven't had time to send to the plant yet. Uh, Mrs. Norton, you, you, you can't go back there. 
Mrs. Norton, really, you, you haven't any right to go looking through those clothes. Oh, I have to answer the telephone. Only, Mrs. Norton, I, I assure you, those trousers were sent off last week. Logan's cleaning and dying. Logan's cleaning and dying. Uh, excuse me, please. Mrs. Norton, what are you doing with that old oily rag? This old oily rag, Mr. Logan, happens to be quite a tradition in my family. It's my husband's pants. But Mrs. Norton... Oh, Mr. Logan, you're such a wonderful cleaner. Anybody home? Who wants to know? It's the bookcase painter lady. All ready to go to work? Who wants to know? Say, you look awfully clean for a painter. Are you sure you can qualify? Just give me time, lady. Just let me get started. A good painter doesn't have to get started. He looks dirty before he gets started. Well, you've got to give me a chance, Mrs. Norton. No, I'm very sorry, Mr. Norton, but the lady who owns that bookcase won't let anybody near them who doesn't look like a painter. Oh, she won't, huh? Don't, uh, don't I look like a painter? No, you're too clean. Your clothes are too clean. But uh, I, I, I've got the paint. No, you need more than paint to be a painter. I've got the brush, too, and the turpentine and the rags. Your and... uniform is not right. And the lady who owns these bookcases won't let you near them. Oh. Well, um, how about you? Uh, can't you do anything for me? Will this do? This? Why, what do you know? It's my painting pants. Is it? And they're just as dirty as they ever were. That isn't dirt, David. That's tradition. You said so yourself this morning. Come here, you... You half-sized monster. Monster? Come here and let me kiss you. What have I done now? Nothing. Except you had me completely fooled. I did? I was sure you sent these pants to the cleaners. You were? I'd have bet you 20 cents. You mean you think I'd send a pair of pants like this to the cleaners? I might, but why, why, they aren't worth cleaning. Why, David, even a cleaner knows that. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya and Roger Starr, and the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. When you're at the market today, remember to check your hospitality needs, especially if there are any young people in the family. Unless you're sure there's plenty of Coca-Cola at home, better pick up a carton or two. Or better still, have the grocer or the service station attendant put a case of Coke in the car. It's bound to come in handy. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. <laughs>